Welcome back everybody, my name is Hamza Far, and today we're actually in Detroit, Michigan and I'm going to show you guys the first batch of units that I ever furnished, the problems that I'm running into them, negotiating these lease renewals and what I'm doing to actually increase my revenue over the next 12-24 months from these first batch of apartments. The biggest problem that I had when I was first starting out was that my budget was very limited. So I didn't really spend that much on furnishing these apartments like I have been over the last few months as you guys have been seeing. The accent walls, the nicer coffee tables, the dining tables, all the nice stuff that's in the apartments. I, had, I actually didn't do any of that during my first batch of units because my budget was very, very limited. So because of that, these units actually suffered in terms of actually making money. They haven't really made much, to be honest, for the last few months. And on top of that, the maintenance issues added on, this is basically a huge loss leader for me. So because the location is great, I know I can actually make money if I actually put money into the units, fix all the maintenance issues, and actually revamp and refresh all the units with accent walls, coffee tables, adding more beds, sofa beds, uh, nicer rugs. Like, there's so many things I'm going to show you guys that I did wrong when I first started and things that I have to do now to actually make money in an ever so competitive Airbnb arbitrage market. The number of hosts are growing every single day and that means you have to be more competitive and make sure your properties are nicely designed, nicely furnished, have as many amenities, sleep as many people as possible, that way you can make as much money as possible. Okay, let's go. In this building, I currently have 35 apartments. And out of all of them, to be honest, maybe only 20 of them are actually making really good money. The other 15 are pretty much breaking even or making a little bit of a profit. Some months are actually losing money because these are the units that I first furnished when I first, first, first got started. And they're furnished really, really poorly. And I'm just gonna walk into some of these units and I'll show you exactly the mistakes that I made and things that you should avoid and the things that you should be doing to make sure you make the most money possible. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice about these apartments is that, to be fair, they are pretty old. Now, given the location, it's still worth it because for me, I think personal location is the number one most important thing. After that, everything else really matters. Because the location is so great, that's the reason why I have 35 apartments in the entire building. And I'm telling you, in terms of location, this building cannot be beat. But as you can see, it's a lot older. It's a lot of white appliances, a lot of old stuff going on here. There are old dishwashers. You know, it is what it is, but it still makes money. There's a few things I definitely am going to change as I refresh these apartments. So the first thing that we're going to be changing out is the dining table and chairs in almost all these apartments. These dining chairs suck, and I bought them when they were $20 each. These things come out all the time. They always end up breaking, and we have to replace so many of them, it doesn't make sense anymore, along with the dining table. If you look at it from a far distance, it's pretty ugly. There's a lot more space here that I could be using if I buy a better dining table and dining chair set, especially for a two bedroom apartment, I can definitely put the money in and make it a lot nicer. This dining table, this dining table chairs, it's not nice at all and I'm completely gonna get rid of it. Now take a look over here. This is a huge problem in a lot of these units is that there's a lot of paint job that needs to be done. So on these walls, majority of the time you're gonna see in all my new units, I'm painting the sofa wall and the wall where the TV is as accent walls, a nice dark midnight blue color. Over here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. This sofa here is not a sofa bed, it's completely useless. It's not even that nice to be honest and I bought it for almost six, seven hundred dollars. So these sofas, I'm gonna try to either sell them, 60 of them, and get rid of them. A lot of the units have different sofas, so we'll see which ones we can keep, which ones we have to get rid of. But the main thing is sleeping more people. So we have to add in sofa beds. This sofa is not useful whatsoever. Along with the midnight color wall, it's not gonna match. Now these floor lamps are actually really nice. There's nothing wrong with them whatsoever. The only thing is some of the light bulbs actually went out or they're missing. We're gonna have somebody go do an inventory check and make sure all the light bulbs and all the light lamps. That way we don't have to spend any money on them. Now, specifically in the living room, because your living room is gonna be your hero shot. These rugs are about two and a half years old and I bought them for $40. And you can tell this is not the color they originally were when I first bought them. So these rugs all need to be thrown out in the trash. On top of that, these are only five by seven. Never get a five by seven rug. Even though it's a lot cheaper, it's not worth it, especially for your living room. You wanna get at a very minimum, a 10 by seven. A 10 by seven, sometimes even a 10 by 12 or a 10 by 14. 
Those drugs are a lot more expensive, probably triple or quadruple the price, but it's worth it. It makes your hero shot, your actual living room shot, the pictures, the overall living room feel a lot bigger, a lot more spacious, a lot more cleaner, a lot more aesthetically clean looking. This coffee table is very, very flimsy. Take a look at how it moves. You can't even place a single thing on here. I bought these coffee tables for about $20, $25 each. Now the coffee tables I buy are around 200, maybe sometimes 150 each. So I'm telling you, there's a big difference in how I furnish my apartments now versus how I furnished back then. And back then it worked because that's all the money that I had and I had to make do with what I had. Now for the actual TV and TV stand, some of the units have different type of TV stands. Some of them have the L shape, some of them have an actual stand. Some of them don't even have that. So we're gonna really see what we can do with them, but generally for this one, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. A little better cable management and painting this wall a nice dark blue color as you guys see in my other units. It's gonna make really the wall and the TV itself stand out. The tree can be there and it helps make the space a lot nicer, a lot fresher and a lot cleaner. Now this is another big issue we're having in a lot of these units. As you can see, the thermostats are very, very old. My AC bills are being run up really, really high. So what I'm thinking is to basically take this off and put in a Google Nest thermostat. That way we can lock the AC at a certain degrees and keep it there. That way it can also reduce my cost and make sure I can monitor the exact temperatures and control my bills. Now I'm gonna show you guys the bedrooms and show you what's gonna happen in the bedrooms. Now in these bedrooms, there's not really much I can really do in terms of the actual carpet on the floor. The carpet's the carpet. But if you take a look at how these are furnished, these bed frames are cheap. They're only $80. The nightstands were $40. The nightstand lamps were probably $15, $20. This apartment was furnished really, really cheaply. And to be honest, there should be four pillows here with two towels, but for some reason, there's only one towel and three pillows. So there's a lot of things that have to go into the actual bedrooms to make it a lot nicer. There's no wall art here. There's no painted accent wall. These nightstand lamps have to go. These aren't even nightstand lamps. I cheaped out and I bought desk lamps that were 15 bucks each. The nice stand lamps I buy now are almost $50 each and they're a lot bigger, a lot nicer than stainless steel. Even the nice stands themselves, these are very, very small. Those outlet covers missing in almost every single outlet in this room. Right? There's a lot of things that have to do in these bedrooms just to get them up to my standard. These random carpets that are underneath on top of the carpet looks really, really ugly. These need to be completely removed as well. Now in the second bedroom, Here's the thing that we have to do. I want to add a second bed because I need to increase the total number of people sleeping in this two bedroom apartment. On average, I want my two bedrooms to sleep a minimum of eight people. The only thing that's gonna happen is if I add at least two beds in one of the bedrooms, the larger bedroom being this one, having one queen bed in the other bedroom and a sofa bed. That way I have four beds sleeping eight people in a two bedroom apartment. So in this bedroom here, we have a lot of space to add an extra queen bed. That way we can have four people in this bedroom, two people in the second bedroom, and then two people on the sofa bed. Because right now this space only sleeps four people. By doubling the number of beds, that means I can double the number of people I'm sleeping. This also means I can therefore increase my overall occupancy, increase my overall revenue. In terms of the actual bedroom itself, the desks are perfectly fine, the desk lamps are fine, the chairs are horrible. This should not be here. This is flimsy and it's actually breaking apart. I'm gonna get a nice office chair that's actually gonna sit right here that you can actually work with and it might add a actual 4K monitor because a lot of people come to the city, especially downtown, for business and for work. <laughs> Now here's a second unit that I want to show you guys on how we're going to improve it and what's actually currently wrong with it. So the first thing if you notice, lighting. These light fixtures suck. Half of them don't even work. If I even replace the light bulb, it's still not gonna be done properly. There's another light fixture over there and over there. So what I'm gonna do is my plan is to replace all these light fixtures, have an electrician come in, take the light fixtures off and go ahead and replace it with something a lot more modern, a lot more bright and a lot nicer. These dining tables and dining chairs, again, same issue. These dining chairs are always flimsy, they're always breaking. They're cheap, they're $25, but it's not worth it. This dining table, there's nothing really wrong with it. Just the chairs themselves need to be replaced and the dining table is perfectly fine. Now, if you come over here to the living room, this is the dilemma that I'm having because obviously I want to add a sofa bed, but there's nothing really wrong with these sofas. These sofas are perfectly fine just the way they are. And I think I bought them almost $800 for the entire set. So for this unit specifically, we're not gonna go ahead and replace these with sofa beds. These sofas are fine just the way they are. There's nothing wrong with them. They're really clean and they're okay. Now this rug, as you can see, when I first bought it two and a half years ago, this was almost completely blue. Now it's just filled with filth and in two years it is disgusting this. So we're gonna get rid of these rugs completely. Have a nice big seven by 10 area rug right here that actually goes underneath both sofas and makes it look a lot nicer. 
Now, if you come over here and I show you the TV stand, there's nothing wrong with the TV stand. The TV stand is great, the TV's great. They're all 4K, 55 inch TVs, they're perfectly fine. We're gonna basically move everything over a little bit over here, paint the entire wall a dark midnight blue. Same with that wall back there where the sofa is. It'll make the space look a lot nicer and a lot brighter and a lot cleaner. This console table, honestly, it's not really needed. It's not even nice over here. If anything, I'm gonna throw this away and add a nice big gold and white console table to match with everything else in the entire apartment. So this thing is probably gonna go. If you go to the bedrooms over here, let's take a look what the bedrooms look like. So in bedroom number one over here, as you guys can see, the bed frame is actually really nice. All we're gonna do here is paint the entire wall in nice dark blue or maybe even a dark gray color to match. The actual nightstands themselves, there's nothing really wrong with the nightstands. The nightstands are fine. Some of them need a little bit of fixing, but the nightstand lamps, these are not nightstand lamps. These are desk lamps. And as you guys saw, I cheaped out and I wanted to only spend $20 per lamp. Now I'm spending about $50 per lamp, and it's a lot nicer, it looks a lot bigger, and it's nice and big and bright, and that's what you want to see in these bedrooms, not these small little dust lamps. So all this stuff needs to basically be fixed, that way we can make sure we can make more money from all these apartments. Now, in the second bedroom, if you guys take a look, what we're actually going to be doing, because it's nice and spacious, is adding that second bed over here. So that nightstand is going to be completely gone. We're going to go ahead and move it over to one side, and we're going to go ahead and add two beds in this entire bedroom. That way this unit can finally go from sleeping only four people with two beds all the way to sleeping six people with three beds. Remember, air mattresses do not count as a bed anymore on Airbnb. So if you add four air mattresses, it's not gonna add four extra beds for you. Only sofa beds, bunk beds, uh, actual pull-up beds, those are the only things that actually count. So make sure no matter what you do, add a sofa bed when you can and add as many beds as possible. On this unit, let me show you guys the problem with the kitchen and the overall unit and the mistakes that I made to make sure you guys don't make them. So first thing is this kettle over here. This is the cheapest kettle I could find at that time. It was only about $8. Obviously the kettle that I'm getting now is a nice glass kettle for $25 from Amazon. It's a lot nicer, it's see-through, and it's glass. This is ugly. Don't cheap out like I did. And realistically, there's no coffee machine. There's no coffee machine anywhere. There's no utensils, there's no nothing. It's very, very bare bones. If I open these cabinets, I'm probably am missing a bunch of stuff too. So in here, I only have three mugs, no glasses, three plates. And in here, if I open this cabinet, there's only one bowl and a little bit of creamer, nothing else. Very, very bare bones. Obviously, it's not the way you do it. Now, same thing over here. There's a dining table and chairs. It sucks. We don't like it. We're tossing it. These walls, all need to be painted, dark midnight blue. Give all the scuffs on the walls and the marks. Over here, this is the desk and this is the console table. I don't know why the desk is here in the living room with the console table. Maybe it's now a desk and chair situation. Who knows? It's not good, it's not nice. Same thing with these rugs right here. Super, super dirty, disgusting, filthy, completely dark now. Way too small, five by seven. We need to get a nice 10 by 12 or 10 by 13 at the very minimum. Super nice quality rug. This couch right here is a $250 couch that I bought a very long time ago, probably two years old. If I sit on it, my back is already broken from sitting on it. We're gonna get rid of this and buy a proper sofa bed, a nice sectional that can sleep at least two people. This floor lamp, I don't even know what it is. To be honest, it's pretty ugly. We're tossing that. This accent chair has rips all around it and stains all around it. This being thrown in the garbage. This coffee table right here actually has cigarette burns all over it. This being also thrown in the garbage. So a lot of the stuff in here, it we're pretty much tossing out. Now over here, it's pretty ugly. There's wires hanging out everywhere. There's loose cables everywhere. The TV stand itself is not bad. The TV works perfectly fine. We're gonna paint this a nice dark midnight blue. We might add a few things here and there on the side. That tree can stay. Besides that, this part of the wall is fine. This is everything over here. Super ugly, we gotta get rid of it. Now, if we come to the bedroom, it actually gets even worse. Let me show you guys. Now in this bedroom is an atrocity. This right here is the desk. This deck is, is horrible. This is probably a $50 desk and there's no chair. Why is there no chair? I honestly have no answer for you. This desk lamp is probably one of the worst desk lamps you can buy. This is cheap, I bought it for probably 10 bucks, maybe even less, it's horrible. This mirror is falling off the wall. This actually needs to be fixed properly. Uh, it's only a matter of time before it's gonna fall. Obviously, these desk lamps are not supposed to really be used for here. Nightstand lamps. And these are the cheapest nightstands you can buy at Ikea. These are 40, 50 bucks a piece. The ones, the nightstands that I buy now, they're about 85 to 90 dollars a piece, and it makes a huge difference. These nightstands, super ugly, super basic, I hate them. 
We're gonna paint this entire wall in that blue. This picture frame, I don't really like, to be honest. Uh, I'm not even sure where the fourth pillow is. That fourth pillow should be there. Same with that area over here. Actually, this bedroom is big enough. We're gonna remove this mirror. And we're gonna have two queen beds here side by side. So that's the way we're gonna basically increase the number of occupants in this bedroom by adding a second queen bed in this one bedroom. So out of these 60 units that I'm now gonna be negotiating for the lease renewal, keep in mind, here are the numbers of what I did during the summer. During the month of May, all 100 of my units total in Detroit did about $1,400 in total net profit per unit. So just to save Detroit of my 100 units did about $140,000 in net profit for all 100 units. In the month of July, my average net profit per unit was around $400. $1,000 less. Last year, my average net profit per unit was $1,500 a unit. This July, it was $400 a unit because of these 60 units that I'm renewing right now, that I'm negotiating, half the ACs all blew out during July and it didn't get fixed for about two, three weeks. So we had cancellation on cancellation, refund on refund. It was just a nightmare, it was insane. I'm telling you, the opportunity cost of how much I had to refund and how much bookings I could have gotten was about a $100,000 loss. So I made only $40,000 in profit, about $400 in net profit per unit on my 100 apartments for the month of July because of all these AC issues. Finally, about a couple of weeks later, you know, everything got fixed, but still it's like, these issues shouldn't even be happening in the first place. So I'm now negotiating how I'm gonna basically re-sign all 60 units. And we're gonna re-sign all of them and actually pay for all the costs out of my own pocket because a lot of these units have to have things done that are actually, you know, the building's responsibility. But majority of the time, these buildings don't really wanna pay for it. So is it really worth the opportunity cost for me to actually pay for myself out of my own pocket versus how much money I can make? Or leave as is and basically, you know, make less money. But at the same time, I'll spend that money out of my own pocket initially. These are the things I have to basically weigh and see what the building is willing to do in terms of working with me. So my negotiation tactic is I'm going to tell them I'm willing to sign, resign all 60 units and I'm willing to pay out of my own pocket people, my own people, to fix all the building issues such as ACs, uh, HVAC, uh, plumbing issues, some uh, electrical outlets, faucets, things like that. We'll fix ourselves. Just give me some type of rent credit or rent concession for resigning the renewal for all these apartments. So I really want to see basically how this negotiation is going to go. It's going to probably happen some next week or the week from now. And we'll see basically where we end, where we end up and you know, if I can actually make things happen or not. But the main thing is I can't have that problem ever happening again. It was a $100,000 lesson that I basically learned. Well, I didn't really learn it. It, was, you know, just, it just ended up happening. All the ACs ended up blowing out all at the same time during that same week period in July. And you know, lost a lot of money. But still made about $40,000 in profit, which I probably should have made at least one fifty k in profit rather than the forty k from just those you know, 100 apartments, but it is what it is. I did about almost $4 million in the last, I'd say four months alone. I'm doing almost a million dollars a month now in revenue. October is gonna be a crazy month. October, right now today is what, September 18th, September 19th. October is gonna be insane. October, I think I'll do a little bit over a million dollars, 1.1 maybe. My profit on that is probably gonna be at least 400,000, maybe 500,000 if you get lucky, depending on how Formula F1 goes in Austin, depending on how ACL goes in Austin because those are gonna be crazy, crazy bookings. Uh, besides that right now, I really don't have much else going on. I got that big deal that I'm currently negotiating and working on right now, that 70 unit new construction development in Philadelphia. It's gonna be starting in a few months. I just got actually an email today for renting an entire building in Miami for 24 apartments. So we're gonna see how that goes. I'm gonna run the numbers, do some calculations. So just because it's Miami doesn't mean it's the deal that I'm gonna take because the numbers have to be worth it. Right now, rents across the entire nation have been been dropping. So right now is actually the best time to get into rental arbitrage because interest rates are crazy, crazy high. There's no point of buying. Rents have been dropping. It's the best time to get into rental arbitrage. The rents are super, super low. So if anyone right now is in a building and they're renewing your leases with you, if they're raising rents on you, they're gouging you because they know themselves they're not going to be able to raise rents on other people because every other building around them is dropping rents across the U.S. Now, some markets, it might change a little bit, but generally, from the East Coast perspective, and especially in the South, even on the West Coast, rents are dropping all across the board. So keep this in mind. When you are renegotiating your renewals, make sure you have some leverage. Because if you don't have leverage, there's really not much you can do in terms of you know having no rent increase, no percentage increase, or getting some type of concession or anything at all when it comes to renewing your rents. 
making sure that you have leverage in these negotiations really, really helps because you want to be the one at the end of the table that doesn't really need these apartments. They need you more than you need them. Just in relationships, just in your marriage, you have to make sure the other person's in love with you more than you're in love with them. At the end of the day, that's the only way you can walk out with victory. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'm off to Toronto tomorrow for a wedding, enjoying time with my friends and my boys. We're gonna have a great time. I'll be back in Dallas next week, the week after. My team is currently furnishing right now 50 units across one building, and we have 10, 12 guys working every single day, 12, 10 hours a day, getting that ready for you. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to that building to make it a building that wasn't making money when I took over those 50 units, to now actually being booked out, making as much money as possible, and showing you how I'm taking taking other operators' losses and turning them to my wins. Just in the last 30 days, I've done almost a million dollars in total Airbnb revenue. A million dollars almost every single month for the last four months. And probably for September and October, it's probably the exact same. So we'll see where this year ends. I'm at 330 units right now. I should be at 400 by the time this year ends. And then starting 2024, it's go time, baby. We're grinding, we're growing, new construction buildings. We're gonna get to five, 600, 700, 800 units. We'll see, and I hope you guys join me along the journey. And make sure you follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Hamza Zafar. My TikTok is Hamza Zafar BNB. My Twitter is Zafar BNB. And follow me as I post the daily life and behind the scenes of a real eight-figure Airbnb entrepreneur.